and all these banks have been buying gold the way that they have central banks over the last two years, last two and a half years, the central banks buying more than any time in history. Well, wait till you find out why they're all why they're all repatriating it as well. Not as obvious as it seems with the weaponization. Sure, that's part of it, but it's a little yeah. bit deeper than that. So anyways, so we've agreed to this in principle. And it will be a basket of 40% gold in kilo bar form, deliverable upon request, and a basket of 60% BRICS plus currencies. No one currency can dominate more than 30% of that basket. In just two years, central banks have bought more gold than at any point in history. Why? Because the BRICS nations, led by Russia and China, are weaponizing gold, and the US dollar is no longer part of the equation. With Saudi Arabia now jumping in, BRICS has agreed on a new settlement currency, 40% backed by gold. That's right, gold, the only tier one asset, is replacing the US dollar, which has been depreciating by 7% annually. As these countries repatriate their gold and phase out US treasuries, the US economy is heading toward a collapse, driven by a commodity that can't be sanctioned or weaponized. The answer lies within the M-Bridge and the unit ecosystem. So let's go back a few weeks ago. There was a meeting coinciding with the G7 meeting in Italy. And that meeting was a, a BRICS meeting in Novograd, Russia. The G7 meeting um, in Italy, they invited the Royal Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. He said, sorry, guys, I'm busy. Can't make it. But he sent his finance ministers to the BRICS meeting at the same time in Russia, which is a kind of a big thing. Um, if you read between the lines, that's a big deal. You know, we're not going to come to the West, but we're going to go to the new guys. Yeah. All sure. right, cool. So out of that meeting came a couple of, of very important things. <clears throat> and the reason I've been talking about the BRICS issuing a common settlement currency or even a BRICS currency, which this is not, is that there's a man named Sergey Glazyev. And I've been saying this on thousands of YouTube videos since 2020. Because Sergei Glazyev is the Russian finance minister, the minister of, of economics for the Eurasian Economic Union. And he said this, for years, there will be a common currency that will be backed by a basket of, of commodities, he said, and a basket of BRICS plus currencies. I've been saying this forever, so I've been saying it. Long before anyone else has talked about this publicly, I was screaming about it in 2020. And... Then there's a meeting in this meeting in Russia <clears throat> just a few weeks ago. And from it, Delma Rousseff comes out and makes a couple of comments. Delma Rousseff is the former president of Brazil. Delma Rousseff is no small fry. Delma Rousseff is the head of the BRICS New Development Bank. And she came out and publicly said the following. She said, first of all, 59 countries have formally applied to the BRICS, uh, have expressed interest in joining the BRICS and, and applying at this new meeting in um, in October in, um, Kazan, yeah. in Kazan. But she said there are two things. She said, I had two meetings, <clears throat> excuse me, on the sidelines with Sergey Glazyev and Putin. And in principle, we have agreed to a new settlement currency, a new settlement currency. Remember Embridge, trade our local currencies, our CBDCs over the the Ambridge, and so we have to make sure that we keep our BRICS plus currency ecosystem, our own monetary system, our economic system. We got to do take good care of it. We don't have to worry about converting to a U.S. dollar as much. We want to keep our own little ecosystem strong. So she said, in principle, we have agreed to a new settlement currency called the unit, and the unit will be instead of a basket of currency. And by the way, she said I had these meetings with. Putin and Glazyev. And she said, in principle, we're, we've agreed it will be a basket of 40% gold, not basket of commodities, 40% gold. What is gold? Oh, yeah. It's the only other tier one reserve asset as, as um, reclassified by who? The Bank of International Settlements. Who is behind what? Embridge. Do you think there's any coincidence that gold is a tier one asset and all these banks have been buying gold the way that they have central banks over the last two years, last two and a half years, the central banks buying more than any time in history. Well, wait till you find out why they're all why they're all repatriating it as well. Not as obvious as it seems with the weaponization. Sure, that's part of it. 
but it's a little yeah. bit deeper than that. Anyways, so we've agreed to this in principle. And it will be a basket of 40% gold in kilo bar form, deliverable upon request, and a basket of 60% BRICS plus currencies. No one currency can dominate more than 30% of that basket. And so it will really behoove these countries to make sure that their little monetary ecosystem is in check and they're, they're taking good care of it. All right. And where is so, the gold going to be stored? So this is the key. And this is why they're all repatriating their gold. If you read the white paper, which I will send you, you will see the following. The unit token is a token that will be minted by each country that wants. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm um, Brazil and you're China. And you've been buying all my, uh, my corn and my soybeans and whatnot. And I, look, you guys, I have enough digital you want. I like it and I can convert it into gold. And, but on this, this trade, I would really prefer, because I'm going to sell you a bunch of coal or something. I'd really prefer the unit. Okay, no sweat. What is the unit? The unit is a, is a digital token that will be traded over Embridge. Now, by the way, as a, as a side note, there are four participants in Embridge I mentioned, right? China, Hong Kong, Thailand, UAE. There's about 25 observational partners. Yeah, are like Saudi Arabia. And, yeah. Saudi yeah. Arabia is not an observational. They're number five. They just became oh, yeah, they're applied, right? yeah, in June. Yeah. participant in Embridge. Then you got about 25 countries that are just watching and signed up as an observational. That's one step before joining. Saudi Arabia just jumped in with both feet. So you got the BIS behind it, those four countries, and now Saudi Arabia on a platform that the U.S. dollar is not compatible with, right? We're the biggest producer of oil in the world on a platform that, it, that the dollars are not compatible with that we just learned is going to be the main settlement platform for this new BRICS settlement currency. So the unit ecosystem says that the gold and that the currency that is used to mint these, these tokens will all be thrown into an escrow account within the borders of the countries that possess the gold. In other words, this system that we've been in for 70 years, the West holds the gold. Send us your gold and we'll give you access to our markets. Ain't, the way, ain't that way this way. This new program is you hold your own gold. You're going to, to pull it into an escrow account. You're going to mint your own tokens. But those escrow accounts, well, they're going to be audited independently, continuously to maintain the, the integrity of the ecosystem. Strict penalties if you deviate from that protocol. In other words, you're not going to need to send your gold to Beijing or to Moscow or to the United Arab Emirates. You're going to keep it yourself. Right. Not only that, if I say to you as China, listen, you know, we, you just bought all my coal. I'm going to, I, I would like the delivery of those kilo bars, please. So the gold is in kilo bar form deliverable upon request. So, yes, and, and so now you don't have to trust any central authority. So we're going to use our own CBDCs to trade most of the time, but if I want to settle in the unit, let's settle in the unit, and it is gold back. So when you look at all of these countries, those 30 countries that have brought their gold home, yes, it's partially because the U.S. weaponized the treasury market, but it's also because the BIS, remember how they, the BIS told these countries, you know they did, start bring them back your gold and start buying it. And lo and behold, it's reclassified tier one. Now you got 30 countries or more that have all brought their gold back from the Bank of England to the New York Fed and no one quite understands it. It's gotta be because yeah. of weaponization. No, the BIS behind this, they're telling them there's gonna be a new settlement currency and it's gonna be pegged to gold. So you would be smart to bring your gold home from those two spots and to start buying it. Who's been buying more gold over the past two years and at any time in central bank history? the central banks. And, yeah. But that's what I've been saying forever. Those Enbridge countries, of course they're buying gold because they know that. So here's the thing. When you talk about gold and, and, and relate it to the dollar, um, you know, the petrodollar deal said, we will sell you, um, we, will, we will denominate oil globally in dollars and for that, and recycle any extra um, proceeds into treasuries, but for that, you'll protect us. Okay, great. So now Saudi Arabia uh, has joined BRICS, the BRICS New Development Bank. They, they've joined the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which is the largest regional military organization in the world. And, and if you look at <clears throat> like the performance of, of the treasury, for example, over the last 25 years, gold has doubled it. 
with no counterparty risk. It can't be taken from you if you're holding it in your own possession. And so there's no reason to own treasuries. And so what these countries are doing are slowly rolling off. They're not, they're not continuing to re-up their treasuries, letting them roll off their balance sheet and replacing it with gold because gold has doubled its performance and has no counterparty risk and will be part of this new system. And, and so what you're realizing, and, and, and I'll just, I mean, there's some numbers that I did just the other day. And I'll read it to you. If you, were, if you were Saudi Arabia, what would you rather have? Would you rather have um, uh, your, would you rather have dollars or gold? And I, and I did this math. And I did that. This is the interesting part. I did this last week with gold at 2590. And today we have gold at 2661. So in a week, it's up 70 bucks. But well, I'll do it with 2661. At 2590 and oil at 70 bucks a barrel, you get 37 barrels of oil for one ounce of gold. Right now, it works up to 38 barrels of oil because in a week it's yeah. gone up. So if you're Saudi Arabia, you're thinking, shit, what do I want dollars for that are depreciating by 7% per year? through money creation when I can buy gold that's increasing by 9.9% per year since 2000. And you can see that in a week, it's the difference of one barrel of oil because gold keeps going up. So in any case, um, if you realize that you, for one ounce of gold, you get, you get 38 barrels of oil. Uh, you know, imagine you, you have a, a, your, your wife's purse. See, you're married. And your wife's purse, and maybe she's got an extra strong strap, and it can hold 20 pounds worth of gold which is 290 ounces of gold. 290 ounces of gold in one woman's purse buys 10,000, well, it was 10,730 barrels of oil. Right now, it's going to be more than that. So if you take um, uh, 2661 times 290, that divide that by 70 bucks, 11,024 barrels of oil for as much gold as your wife could hold in her purse. So why the hell would you want U.S. dollars if gold is now the only U tier one reserve asset? It's going to be pegging a new system. It has no counterparty liability. It cannot be sanctioned. What the hell do you want dollars for? You don't. And what about treasuries? Oh, yeah, gold has doubled the performance of the treasury market over the last 25 years, and it cannot be sanctioned. In fact, turned into weapons and given to the country you're in the midst of a war against bad decision by the U.S. So when you talk about where this is ultimately going, there is no, it makes zero sense for Saudi Arabia to want to continue to accept dollars and treasuries in a country that has chosen inflation over austerity. We've pivoted again. We've lowered rates again. And the funny thing is they lower rates and what happens? The bond market sells off and rates on the back end of the curve go up because the rest of the world says, really? You really think we're going to continue to hold your duration treasuries when you're just going to inflate your way out of this mess? Right. Yeah. So this is a problem that ain't getting better. Gold is the solution by many of these countries' appraisal. Now that you understand how BRICS is weaponizing gold to challenge the US dollar, the next step is even more critical. The financial landscape is shifting fast, and you need to be ahead of the curve. So don't miss the next video, where we break down how these changes will impact global markets and your own investments. Make sure you're prepared for what's coming next. See you there.